Hi, I'm Tracy Carrillo. I'm a, the Assistant Director of Campus Farms Operation at New Mexico State University. And we're standing here today in a cotton field of glenless cotton at the Leindecker Plant Science Center in Las Cruces, New Mexico. I wanted to tell you a little bit about the project that we're working on, and that's working with glanless cotton. We use glanless cotton for a lot of different projects, and we're integrating with a lot of different departments on campus. We have engineering, we have aquatic uh, specialists, we have uh, food technology people, we have plant breeders, we have agronomists, and just a whole range of integration and technology working together to develop this cotton to add value to it and help the farmers produce more in the field. Today we are standing in a cotton field at New Mexico State University Experiment Station where we are conducting research on uh, cotton varieties that can be used in a wide range of products. Most people recognize that cotton uh, produces a fiber for use in blue jeans and t-shirts, but what most people don't realize is that cotton has always been grown and regulated as a food crop. The scope of our project out here at Leyendecker is to find a sustainable way to use cotton seed. What we're doing is we grow the cotton seed and we take the oil out and send it to the NMSU facilities so they can use it for cooking. And we later retrieve the oil, take it back here and turn it into biodiesel. With the rest of the seed, we grind it into a fine, like a, a flour type uh, consistency and we mix it with an algae we harvest from another one of our facilities. This is later turned into a pellet and fed to the shrimp here at NMSU. Going back over 100 years ago, cottonseed oil was the original vegetable oil in the United States. It's, uh, it's been uh, in the uh, food service industry and even on the grocery store shelf for well over 100 years. Cottonseed oil is, is a wonderful oil. It's, uh, it's very shelf stable. It works very well in uh, snack foods and uh, has a fairly low level of uh, uh, saturates. It has no trans fat or cholesterol. And so the cottonseed oil is, uh, is a good food ingredient and uh, it actually, we produce a considerable amount of cottonseed oil in the United States that's used in food products. Uh, the per capita consumption in the United States is about three pints per person. So every man, woman, and child consumes about three pints of cottonseed oil. What we have here are flavor-infused cottonseed oils for cooking. They are rich in antioxidants, they have zero cholesterol, zero trans fat, and a very high smoke point so you can saute and stir fry and they won't scorch or burn or disappear in the pan. Um, it's also made from a very neutral base. Cottonseed oil has, is flavor neutral. So the flavors that we're infusing into the cottonseed oils are really intense and really deliver. Um, cottonseed oil is an old favorite in America's kitchens. It's been used in commercial and residential kitchens for more than a hundred years. Um, we just thought we'd make a new twist on an old favorite and add um, flavors and um, help to share cottonseed oil with, with a broader range of people and, and introduce it to America's kitchens as our new favorite flavored cooking oil. I'm Katrina Miner. I'm the marketing director for Sodexo Campus Dining at NMSU. We use cottonseed oil in all of our fryers and when the oil runs its course, it's recycled into biodiesel and used on campus to run our catering vehicle. And basically what we do is we fill it with 50 gallons of waste vegetable oil, 10 gallons of methanol, and uh, various other chemicals like sulfuric acid and uh, sodium hydroxide. And this machine makes it super, super easy. All we basically have to do is turn it on and hit the start button and all the computers, all of everything in it, it tells it what to do, when to do it and everything like that. It is just a pretty cool machine. So after the wash cycle is done and it's made diesel, it's made the biodiesel clean and able to run in any diesel engine. It can run in a pickup, it can run in farm equipment, and it, we're also running it in uh, these, this 4x4 here on campus. And the food service is using it to transfer all the food around campus. 
Hi, my name is Nancy Flores. I'm an Extension Food Technology Specialist with New Mexico State University. Uh, we have developed a product using the glandless cottonseed meal and corn flour and green chili. We use an extruder which cooks and shapes the product in a single process. It's a shelf stable product. Uh, the product that we developed, we developed three different flavors and it is it has two grams of fat, four grams of protein, and that has a third less calories than your normal corn-based uh, snack. The cottonseed flour we're trying to use in basically baked good products, types of, of baked good products in, in cookies, cakes, those types of products right now as a substitute for uh, wheat flour. And so since the cottonseed is gluten free, that's a, an advantage for many people. Plus it's also pretty high in protein and has a good mineral content, which is different than the wheat flour. So that's been an advantage, even though it's a little difficult to work with. It doesn't bake like regular wheat flour does, but we're trying it in different kinds of products that we could do dry mixes for that people could then buy as a dry mix they would take home and buy for things like cookies. Okay, what we're testing today is four different kinds of cookies. We have an oatmeal cookie, a peanut butter cookie, a chocolate chip cookie, and a chocolate cookie. Our project's progressing really successfully. We've had really good outturns with the food itself. We've had a good consistency. We've learned a lot of stuff in Corpus Christi from the people we're working with. Um, the, the study itself is about to start this next week. Uh, we're going to have about 12 shrimp per tank and we're going to be feeding them the mix of cottonseed and algae. With the research we've done to this point, it looks very promising and it looks like we're going to be able to get a really good crop and really healthy full shrimp out of this, out of this system. Um, it's a very sustainable system, zero water exchange. Um, once we fill the pools once, we don't have to fill them again. The bioflock provides an, alt an alternate food source for the shrimp on top of the cotton meal and actually helps um, the shrimp digest the cotton better, um, which gives the shrimp a sweet taste. In fact, many, many of the fisheries in, in dry areas such as this call, this call their shrimp that they produce sweet shrimp. These are our two grow-out tanks. We expect to get 30,000 shrimp out of these once we harvest. With overfishing being a real big problem in today's world, uh, cottonseed really provides a good alternative to the protein that's supplied by the fish meal that's used in today's shrimp feed.